Kia ora and welcome to Tough Tutorials. Today we're going to be covering vase arrangements. So we're going to start with choice of vase, we're then going to be talking about mechanics. Ultimately we're going to go into of course the arrangement and how your choice of vase, your mechanics dictate the type of arrangement style you're going to go into. So here before us we have five options, all slightly different compositions and shapes. When you have a vertical vase like this, all your stems are going to get pretty upright and you know. They're not going to be able to fall, you're not going to need any mechanics, you're not going to need any foam, you're not going to need any chicken wire. Same may be said for this vase here, still a very vertical composition, though your stems might get a little angle toward them. And then you move into these lower sort of scale, scale and composition, and they are going to need a bit of help from some mechanics. So by way of mechanics today, we have foam, Oasis foam. Maybe not the most environmentally friendly option, but definitely practical and definitely helpful. And chicken wire. Chicken wire is a great option, and it is actually gonna be the option we're gonna go with today. Let's make our vase selection. I've got flowers over here, certain style, colorways. Based on the fact that we're using this chicken wire, we're gonna come into this little like wooden vase, a very unusual set of vase but nonetheless, it'll be challenging and it'll be fun. Let's cut and prep our chicken wire. You're not gonna need a lot of chicken wire, but I will share with you a couple very important aspects to the making of your structure. I would say roll it out like this. If you flip it over, you'll do yourself a favor and it won't continue to roll up on yourself. There's nothing more annoying than that. So when you're cutting your chicken wire, you're gonna to wanna to take into account the size and the scale of your vase or your vessel. Um, but you're also going to go a little bit oversized, and I'll explain to you why in a moment. So we'll cut a bit of this right here. These are wire cutters that I'm using, or like tin snips in fact. They do a great job. You don't want to be using your floral shears because they'll get blunted and they'll get little chips in them and that won't be any good. So I don't recommend doing that. Um, so check it out, I'm almost there. Cool. This guy right here is going to be perfect. So what you're creating is a ball that goes in here. But what you really need to be sure that you do is that you make essentially like two layers. Because if a stem goes through a single layer, it's got nothing to hook onto, right? So it can just fall over in any particular way. If it has something to come into, all of a sudden it's going nowhere. So that's a key to using chicken wire. That's super important. So I'm just sort of like folding it over kind of like origami if any of you have done a bit of that, but just making a bit of a, a messy kind of cage, right? And as you can see, any stem going in in any particular direction is gonna have no problem finding another piece of wire to sort of hook into. Now we've got ourselves a bit of a ball here that's gonna fit nicely inside here. And don't be concerned if it ultimately like protrudes above your vessel because by the time we fill it out with some foliage, you're not gonna have any issue there. Now's the time for a bit of water. So I'm gonna take my leaky bucket here and fill this little vessel with some water. I would fill it as high as you can. Of course, that gives the opportunity for a little bit of spillage, but I would rather have spillage than have a stem not find itself some water and then get droopy and dry it out. All right, so now we move on to the fun part. We start working with the flowers. I love to start my arrangements with foliage. They end up being like a beautiful kind of backdrop and like a nice wash. Also, it's gonna do wonders when trying to cover up this chicken wire. So we have a little bit of agones here. We have some guinea eucalyptus right here. And then we have a bit of leucodendron and some knife blade acacia. I'm not one to want to use anything like this, right? So when you're cutting these stems and you're getting them to be the right size for the scale of your arrangement, I would really avoid like taking, you know, the lower half and being like, oh, I can use that too. And there's nothing worse than seeing the end of a cut stem. So we're gonna prep our stems first, right? 
It's always better to prep yourself and get yourself into a position. I like to do each stage at a time. So I'm gonna get myself a few of these uh, acacia stems. Another thing to note is you can always cut a stem down, but you can't add any stem on once you've cut it. So cut them long, and then when you come to arrange with them later, cut them shorter if you need to. So we'll get some of this agones going. Let's get some of this guinea. This bushy tip is kind of nice right here. Let's use this. You know, if you cut these guys well, you can use pieces, right? So like, I may be kind of contradicting myself from my earlier statement. I cut the tip off the stem. But if I use this and I cut this on an angle like so, all of a sudden, you wouldn't know, you know? You wouldn't have any idea that I just had cut this because of the way that I cut it. So having, having a stem like that is nice. By doing that, you're also gonna maximize your stems, right? Flowers aren't free, nor is plant material. So the most you can get out of them, the better. So that's probably gonna be enough of the guinea. And then let's get some of these leucodendron stems. I'm gonna go long and I can always cut them shorter. This guy's kind of nice as he is, so cool. So now I wanna like prep these stems a little bit. There's nothing worse than a whole bunch of foliage in your water. So I'm gonna just trim those guys down. These are gones, just get those stems cleaned up. Notice there's a little bit of prep, right? Oftentimes you're gonna feel like, oh, flower arranging, what a beautiful and creative art form. Yes, indeed, but it's also a laborious art form. You have to prep yourself so that you can set yourself up success which is true of anything. So, I don't know, maybe it's a nice practice for life. But just getting all those little leaves off so that they don't end up sitting in the water. Why? Because it's going to make the water get more bacteria in it. And then also it's gonna allow more water to get to the tips and for the stem to last longer because it's not having to keep this whole stem fresh. And then this knife blade. So now we have all of our foliage prepped and it's going to be time to kind of lay a little base layer down. The chicken wire is going to kind of act as our dictator to our composition and then also just like note the vase, right? Oftentimes I like to think of artistic endeavors in threes. So we're going to be considering the fact that maybe this is one part vase to two parts arrangement, and that will ultimately make like a well-balanced composition. Once we get into the floral aspect of it and we kind of lose thought of the vase itself, we can start thinking of threes in the arrangement itself. So let's do just that. Let's start off with our greens. I'm gonna use these bigger stems and I'm already feeling like that's a little long. So guess what? I can cut it back. Now, if it was too short, I couldn't add more stem to it. So we're already winning. Our prep is making it work nicely. You're gonna find yourself like concerned that all of a sudden your thing might tip, right? So you're gonna wanna work your way around the vase, making sure that at times you're balancing out and going from one side of the arrangement to the other, making sure that your flower arrangement doesn't topple over. Important not to judge the process, right? This is by no means a work, a finished piece. So, you know, don't think of it as a finished piece. Don't say, oh, this looks crap, because it kind of does, because by the time you're finished with it, it won't. Feel free to like gather a couple pieces at once and kind of set them in there. That way you get more of a, more of a texture. It's kind of collected. Now you can see that a vase that has this open sort of shape to it is going to end up being a little more whatever this is called, right? Whereas one of those taller vases is gonna have a much more vertical kind of composition. Cool, so we now have like this kind of weird and wild spacious, holy sort of place to work with. And we're gonna start getting into some of our flowers. 
We've got this beautiful pincushion protea. Uh, we have this anthurium, so beautiful. Uh, we have a dahlia here, this is lovely. A calla lily. These have some carnations, I just broke that one. Kind of cool little carnations. Thistle. Oh, this is a really nice ranuncular. Look at that guy. Kind of nice little tips of purple. I think it's important to know that you don't have to use all of this stuff, right? Like any good artist or any good creative, you have to know when to stop. Don't be married to using all of your materials. We got some chamomile here, and this is a delphinium. Sweet. So from here, I'm gonna work with some of our biggest stems. So let's get this uh, pin cushion in here. Again, remembering that we can always cut the stem down, but we can't add it on, so let's see what we feel. It is a bit of a game with these longer stems or these thicker stems. So just find the right spot for them. Get this guy in here. I tend to go with the bigger stems and try and keep them a bit closer to the arrangement. Keeping the weight of the arrangement centered, keeping the bigger blooms tighter, is gonna mean that you don't all of a sudden find the weight of the arrangement way out here. So give that some thought when arranging. Although there's also the fact that like, that's kind of cool. So in true unlikely fashion, we're gonna embrace this unusual, unlikely um, thing and we're just gonna leave it there. See how we go from here. Let's get this guy right down the center. Nice kind of choice. Sometimes some of your stems are gonna look beautiful and others aren't gonna look that great. You know, take that into note while you wake the arrangement pulling off the leaves so that the water gets up into the stems and doesn't have to get stuck in these leaves. What I like about the anthurium out here and this guy up here is it draws the eye up high, right? And then you have to follow that eye down to, its, to the pincushion down here or the dahlia. So finding these opportunities to draw the eye out and then back in gives like a really like beautiful dimension to your arrangement. And that being said, I'm gonna cut this guy down a little bit because I want there to be a moment that's a little tighter. Another thing to note is that you might find yourself going, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna cover all of this chicken wire. I'm never gonna make this arrangement like finish because, well, because your arrangement is too high. So sometimes when you're feeling that way, you wanna start shortening up your stems and that way the head of the flower, the main of the part where it's gonna cover is going to be closer and therefore cover more. That's kind of what I'm experiencing and I'm just gonna cut, bring this in. And that may be the reason why I have to ultimately bring this anthurium tighter, but let's see. This thistle is a very big stem, so we're gonna keep it tight. And it's a thick stem, right? So I don't wanna get caught in that same issue that I was in earlier. Yeah, and I'm just gonna do a little cluster of thistle. I think it's gonna just read a little better and having them all spread out. But maybe one over here. A little more of this chamomile. I have a secret weapon in my back pocket, so let's see if we want to use it. So it's, it really is starting to come together. And I'll tell you what, the more I start to make this, the more I think this is a wild choice. The more I'm like, what is this anthurium doing way out here? Maybe what I really want to do is get like the ranuncular out wide. So I'm going to bring this guy in, even just a degree. 
I'm just bringing them in a little closer just to see if maybe that's a bit more appropriate. And I feel like that's, that's a little better. That's the thing about working with flowers and making these arrangements is you can always make little edits, right? And you can always cut your stem down a little bit if you need, but you can't add it on. I said that a few times, it's a fact. Chamomile is a newfound love, which is often how it goes with me and flowers. I'm kind of like, no, nah, no, nah, I love this flower, I love that flower. And then once I start working with something, I'm like, I never gave this thing a chance. So I implore you to be open to loving flowers that you never thought you loved before. It's a good situation to find yourself in. Carnations are also one of those flowers kind of think you don't like them until you use them a whole lot and they bring you beautiful colors and textures and you're all, all of a sudden like, I think I really like these. It's like a guilty pleasure. Composition starting to come together here. This is a wild delphinium. Let's see if we can get them right in here. So before we like finish this off, let's just take a look at it and notice like, does this feel like it's sort of two parts arrangement to one part vase? And I'm not saying strictly like, like does that equate to that? It's kind of like a feeling. Does this feel compositionally right? Let's think about, is there three sort of stages to the arrangement itself? It's kind of like a base level down here, maybe this, this uh, pin cushion is kind of layer one or two as it kind of comes up into two and three, and then ultimately like our top space here. I think it pretty much does, personally. Let's sort of see. We can edit, we can change. I want to kind of balance out the weight of this anthurium, maybe with this billy ball. Maybe a little too much. Yeah, I like that. This ranuncula. So I think that like what I'm experiencing is this truly isn't my go-to composition style of arranging. It really isn't. I'm enjoying it. I like the look of it. But like that's what this vessel and this process is kind of bringing out of me is this opportunity to arrange in a different way. So embrace that, I think. I'm trying to and learn from it. Um, yeah, I think that as we kind of work through it, we're getting ourselves a pretty nice little arrangement. So, as I said, I have a secret weapon, and that is this tryptamine right here. It's this beautiful kind of stuff right here, and it has all these wild and weird shapes, and it has these dense and delicate little beautiful flowers. I love to add a delicate touch to any and all of my arrangements as I work. It just kind of seems to me like the best way to finish something off, as opposed to it being such heavy and strong stems at all times. So let's try this out. So I'm kind of getting low. I'm identifying some of these holes right here and just using this beautiful stuff to fill it out, finish it off, and bring it all together. So, I don't know about you guys, but I personally feel like that tryptamine really did the trick and filled it all out. I like the way that the weight of the arrangement really is here but we have these moments of like focus and excitement that pop out and give us an opportunity to be like, wow, what is that? And then follow its stem down to, wow, what's that? And then come down here as we work in, our, in and out. I like the idea of turning this guy up so he's standing tall. Same kind of for this, but ultimately, I'm really happy with that, and I hope you are too. So grab yourself some stems, grab yourself a vessel, 
play with some chicken wire. Make sure you layer it all up and see if you can't make an unlikely florist arrangement that's not so unlikely. So if you like this here arrangement, and how I made it, and how I taught you how I made it, and how you might be able to make one yourself, give us a like, give us a subscribe. We'll make more arrangements and all sorts of other tutorials for you to enjoy and hopefully expand your creativity. See you later. Thanks for coming.